קל קדוש, בוקר אור, שבוע טוב, מסכת בבא קמא דף ל"ח עמוד א' 38a1, we are by the two dots, where the two dots says, שור של ישראל שנגח שור של כנעני פטור. If you have a shore of a Jew, that gores a shore of a non-Jew, the Jew is going to be פטור. But the other way around, he's going to be pay נזק שלם, doesn't matter whether it's a tam or a muan. Right, this is very fair rules, Richard. Amri, yeah, right, it's stated. Iman avshach. If you're going to tell me that it has to be short re'ehu, so therefore the k'nani ki nagach ni'sel nami l'pater, so one second. If you're going to say that it has to be your friends, because it says in the pasuk, ki igach short re'ehu, short re'ehu, that he's going to go to the shore of your friend. So if you're going to tell me that he's not considered your friend, so if his shore goes our shore, he should also be patur. And if you're going to tell me that re'ehu is love davka, So therefore, when our shore goes here shore, it should be chayav. So I don't understand. Meaning you cannot come and just split up the word re'ehu, your friend, to play it according to what you want, right? There has to be some type of rules. So he says, Amar Abiyavu, says Abiyavu, yeah, Dimke, right? He comes and he says, Amar Kai, it says in the Pasuk, Amad vaimoded aretz, ra'a vayater goyim, What does that mean? HaKadosh Baruch Hu was Ahmad Badin. He was standing in the judgment in order to judge, right, the land. And it says, Ra'a Hashem Sheva Mitzot Shekulu Alem Bnei Noach. So he saw the Sheva Mitzot that the Bnei Noach they accepted. Kevan Shelo Kiyemu, since they were not Mekayem Otam, Ahmad V'Yitin Mamona Lisel, which means he said, since the, the non-Jews are not keeping the Sheva Mitzot Bnei Noach, HaKadosh Baruch Hu came and he made their property Hefker to Yisrael. And therefore, if right now the Jews' property comes and he damages theirs, Hefker, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Matid Mamoran. He just says, their money is not, there's nothing. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Rabbi Yochanan comes and he says, Mehacha, from here. What does it mean? There's another pasuk. It says, Hofia mehar paran, ve'atam yivro kodesh. Efo ze katuv? Yeah? So he says, Mi paran hofia mamonam nise. Because that's what happened in paran, That's why there was a knas, right? So therefore, what happened was, is that when he came to Bnei Yisrael in Har Sinai, after they did not accept upon themselves the Torah in Har Paran, so from here we see that once they did not accept upon themselves the Torah, it was a knas, it was a penalty. What's the penalty? Everything, all their money belongs to the Torah Yisrael. So therefore, even though he's not the Re'eu of Yisrael, then that's why our shore, the course, his shore, is not obligated. But the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made their money hefker, that's why we're able to come and tell them, you have to pay us full damages if you're sure God damages are sure. The Tani Mihachi, we also learned this in Raita, Shor Shel Yisrael, Shenegat Shor Shel Kena'ani. When you have a Shor Shel Yisrael, the Gorza Shor Kena'ani, right, it's going to be patur. Shor Shel Kena'ani, Shenegat Shor Shel Yisrael, Ben Tamuad, Shalem Nezek Shalem, exactly like our Mishnah. So we have a Raita exactly like how we have it in accordance with our Mishnah. Shnei Mar, as it says, and it brings down both pasukim. Meaning we brought down first, Rabbi Yavu brought down one pasuk, Rabbi Yochanan brought down another pasuk. Here this bright that comes and brings down both pasukim. And from both pasukim you learn out that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made a knas, and therefore because of the knas he went and he made it, that now everything of theirs is going to be hefkeh. Right? My ve'omer, why does it say ve'omer? And it says, meaning why do we need two pasukim? So says the Gemara, I would have thought to say that maybe this Amad Vayim Odeh Aretz, Mi Bail Elech Rav Matan Echad Rav Yosef. You need it for Rav Matan and Rav Yosef, which we're going to bring down now. What do they say exactly? Tashema, that's why we brought down the second pasuk. Ufiyam Yer Paran, Mi Paran Ufiyam Yer Monon Yisrael. From Paran, it already calls that their money is going to become Knas. So one more time. Our Mishnah gave a statement. The statement was, a Jew's shore that goes a non-Jew, Patu. A non-Jew that goes a Jew, Chayav Nezek Shalem, whether it's a Tam or a Mua. In the Gemara, the Gemara asked a question, I don't understand, Miman Avshach, if it's the, because we learned it from the Pasuk Re'ehu, so if it's our friend, and the non-Jew is not our friend, so it should work both ways. Which means, just like, right, when we go to their shore, we're Patul, because they're not our friend, so same thing vice versa. So the Gemara brought down two different rabbis, Rabbi Avhu and Rabbi Yochran, different Pasukim, obligating You did know that even though they're not Re'u, they're still obligated to pay us Nezik Shalem because their money is a fker. Two different psukim. 
the Brita brought down to the two different Psukim. And the Gemara asks, why did it have to say the second Pasuk? It says the Havamina was because maybe we needed the first Pasuk for Rav Yosef and Rav Matna. And therefore, he comes and he says, right? He comes and he says, since he would have thought to say, right, that it was going to be a kofar of Matna. Now we're going to bring down what is this of Matna and of Yosef exactly, right? So therefore, because of that, we brought down the second pasuk. Says the Gemara, my did of Matna. What is of Matna now? What, what is of Matna? So what exactly happened? What was the exact concept of Rav Matna? The Amad of Matna, but Rav Matna comes and he says, Amad by Modet Eretz Ra'a Bayater Goim. Mar Ra'a, what did they see exactly? Ra'a Sheva Mitzvot Shen Itzavu Alehem Ben Enoach Velo Kiemum. They saw the Sheva Mitzvot Ben Enoach and they weren't Mekayim. They weren't Mekayim the Sheva Mitzvot Ben Enoach and therefore they were punished. Amad the Iglaut Amel Ad Matam. So they came and he actually, uh, he sent them off right from their lands. How do you know that the word vayater means galut? Vayater is like to, to let go or to release, right? Like a heter. A heter is a permission, right? But it's like to, how do you know that that means galut? Galut is that he went to the exile them. How do you know that? So he says, It's written over there. It's written over there. It's written over there. When it says the targum of the, of the pasuk of lenater bahen et aratz, to make them jump up like fitza, they're jumping. So therefore, they're jumping oh, from the, one place the, to the, another. Yeah. There it's to do with the, the animals, grasshoppers, with grasshoppers and all these things, right? So there we're talking about the jumping. So therefore, the same thing. When it says here the same terminology, it means that they were jumping, jumping from place to place. <clears throat> exactly. Okay? Fine. That was Rav Matna. So what is the Pasuk Av Rav Yosef? What did he see? They saw the Shem of Mitzvah and the Nosh, he flew on the Hem, but they didn't accept it. 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 They So he went and he permitted it to them. What does it mean he permitted it to them? Here it says that Hashem saw that it was better to permit them the Shem of Mitzvah to the Amin than to have them always being uh, over on the Shem of Mitzvah and the Nosh. So it says the Gemara, one second. It's Kayir, it's Kayir. He says like this He says, Are you going to tell me you're going to gain? Imagine right now we're going to say, you know what? If you don't keep the law, you're going to gain from not keeping the law. So we're just going to permit it. So imagine, right? You have somebody that's going to come visit beautiful for lawyers, right? Listen, they didn't keep the law. So you know what? Just say it's permitted and you don't have to keep the law. That's what you're going to do? That's what you're going to tell me? That because they didn't keep the law, so just permit them to shove me in the noach. So anybody that sins, they gain. Think about it. Somebody that sins, they gain. So I'm on more very dravina. No, you know why he did that? He did it purposely. Because now, even if they're going to be the Kayim, the Shalom Yitzvah Bin Enoch, they don't get a reward for the Shalom Yitzvah Bin Enoch. There's no reward for the Shalom Yitzvah Bin Enoch. Right? They lose out. They lost out. Okay? So says the Gemara, Velo, not. But Tanya, we learned in the Bright, that Rabbi Mir Omer, How do we know that even if you have a Goy, that he's learning Torah, he's like a Kohen Gadol? So tomorrow Mara comes to teach you, Asher Yasa Utam Adam, Achai Bayam, Kwanim Rui Misalim, Lone Mara, Adam. It says Adam. Halamata, that even if Nochli is going to come and be Yosef Torah, it's like a Kohen Gadol. So Amni, they said, no, 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 you're right. Em mekablim alem schar, ki metzuvay veoseh. Ela ki mi sheeno metzuvay veoseh. Ta amar avokhi, ha gadol ha metzuvay veoseh, yoter mi mi sheeno metzuvay veoseh. We learned this at Kiddushin, if you remember. Which means that here you're right, they do receive reward. But they only receive reward like a person that's not commanded. And a person that's not commanded, he has much less reward for doing something than somebody that's commanded. Why? Because if not, then you, you know, when a person does something and they're a volunteer, it's very easy for them to get out of it. And since it's very easy for them to get out of it, so the reward that they get is much less. Mm -hmm. Because if you want, you do it. You don't want, you don't do it. No big deal. But if a person is obligated, so it's much harder for him to do it. Because then, uh, you know, you can't get out of it. So therefore, he gets the real reward by right, when he actually comes and he actually does it. Okay? Fine. Two dots. Until you're clear. I thought they're not allowed to be Osik the Torah. I don't know, Banana. Two dots. On the Mechetta Mudala towards the bottom. Two dots. I don't know, Banana. We learned in the Braita. Ukvar Shalcha Malchut Romi Shne Sardatio. They already sent two different ministers by Chachmei Yisrael. And they told them, Lamdunu Turatchem, teach us your Torah. They learned it. They learned it a second time, a third time. When they were leaving, they told them, it's true. 
חוץ מדבר זה שאתם אומרים, it's for one thing. שור של ישראל של הקשור של כנעני פטור, שור של כנעני של הקשור של ישראל במועד משלם את זה שלם, מה נפשך? יראו דווקא אפילו את הכנעני כנגח לישראל נפטר, ויראו לאו דווקא אפילו את ישראל כנגח לכנעני לחייב. בדבר זה אין אנו מודיעים אותו למלכות. comes like this, do you know that the Romans went and they sent two פקידים to, to the rabbis, and they said teach us the Torah. So they went, they started learning, learning once, twice, three times. They went and they said, you should know everything, right, that happened was true. Everything that you guys said, 100% true. Except for this. Except for this. What's this? What we just learned. That when a short of a goy, gore is a short of a Jew, he's going to be chayav, everything. He's going to be chayav, right, nezek shalem. But if it's our short, that gore is a short, Nothing. it's patur. Nothing. How could that be? If you learn lehu, So therefore, it should be the same halacha for both. And if you don't learn Rehu, it should be the same. What's going on? So he says, but you should know, right? Even though we don't agree with this, we're not going to tell the kings. Because if not, if we're going to tell the Roman government, they're going to come up against you. So we're not going to mention it. There's something incredible, no? Incredible, right? Yeah, you guys with us? Yeah? You with the donuts. Yeah, Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda. So Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda. He comes to the Barta. So the daughter passed away. Amru le Rabbanan, the rabbi said to Ula, Kum nizel nechamir, come, let's go, we're going to console him. Amar lehu, he told him, Ma'it liga ben necham to the Bavlai. What do I have to do now with the Babylonians? Right, oh, I'm going to do it. Te giduf ahu. It's a giduf klape mala. Te amni, because they're going to say, Ma'i evshal le mevav, what do we, what can we do? Ha evshal le mevav, what do we do? If you were able to do something, you would do something. That's a giduf. Meaning, when people come and say, oh, what can we do? Well, what can we do? Can you do that if you had the possibility you would be able to do something? That's against Hashem. So, Ula went by himself to the Shum of Yehuda. Amale, he told him, it says in the Torah, Don't do anything bad against Moab. Don't do a, a, a war against them. Why did Moshe want to do a minchama? He wanted to make a kavachomer. Just like Midianim, they came to help Moab. The Torah says, Sarot Midianim, go kill out the Midianim. Meaning the Midianim came to help Moab. And Hashem tells us, go kill out the Midianim. So therefore, La Milchet HaMubet, that's already a B. So he why says, the Moabim Atzman. Why is he teaching them this law? One second, so the Moabim themselves, Lo Kol Shikana, you should come and you should fight them? Meaning you should always go and fight them. So Amal Lo Kedosh Baruch Hu says, Kedosh Baruch Hu, not like what you thought, when am I thought? Right? He said, There are two people that are very good that will come out from Moab and Amon. He says, who's that? Ruta Moavia and Naama Hamonit. So because of these two tzadekets that are going to come out from... What? He comes and he says, since these are the two tzadekets, right, that are coming out from these two different nations, Right? So, Naama Amunit is the wife, the wife of Shlomo. Huh? He's consoling yeah. some guy. Why are we discussing right. this? Yeah. One second. Yeah? So, it says like this. He says, So, now we have a Kalvachomen. Why? If there were two good people coming out, right? He went and he, and he didn't destroy them. Right? This is something incredible because this is actually much more something bad instead of something good. But just imagine the consolation. He went and he said like this. He says, think of it this way. You have Amon and Moab. Amon and Moab are two huge nations. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to come and kill them completely out. And Akadosh Baruch Hu says, there's going to be two people that are going to come out, one from each nation, which are going to be good. And because of that one person from each nation, one from Moab and one from Amon, don't destroy them. Don't kill them out. So Hashem saved the entire nation for one person. Entire Moab for Ruta Moavia. The entire Amon for Naama Amunit. So if right now, Kadosh Baruch Hu, if a Kadosh Baruch Hu, right, Shniya, if a Kadosh Baruch Hu, right, saved an entire nation for one person. So therefore, if Pe'emet, Kalvachomet, if somebody kosher was going to come out of the guy's daughter, so he wouldn't have killed her. He would have saved her. And therefore, obviously, that wasn't the case. And therefore, he killed her. Everything to tell a father. Well, says the Gemara like this. Yeah? Says the Gemara um, like this. Ama Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Rabbi Yochanan. Says Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, and then Rabbi Yochanan. Ena Kadosh Baruch Hu mekapeach schar kol biriyat, afilu schar sikhana. 
do you know how Kadosh Baruch Hu is not going to take away the schar of anybody? Not even of a good speech. Because the Chira, the older one of Benot Lot, she said Mu'av means from my father. Meaning she went and she had a child. And that child came from my father. And since that child came from my father, it wasn't a clean. So Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Al Tatsar Mu'av to the don't make a milchama. Hangari avi but you can come and start, uh, you know, giving them the taxes and this and that, and you know, you could even make them draw water for you, and you could subjugate them basically. Okay. However, though, the tzida, the younger one, she said Ben Amish, it came from a nation, so they didn't say it came from a father, it came from a nation. So Malo Kadosh Baruch Hu Moshe, the Karavta Mul Ben Amon and Zerumet Gorbi Milchama Klal, the Afilu Hangari Alot Avi Beu, that even she Abud don't do. Which means it's like a schar on lashon mekia, meaning the fact that she used the more refined language, and she didn't say mefurash that it came from the father. She came, it came from a nation, right? So therefore, she was rewarded. How was she rewarded? Taxes. That for her, not even the taxes and all these things, meaning that not even to put on them these like uh, you know the subjugations of bringing water and bread and that. No, they don't even have to do that. So therefore, you see from here that even on sichana, how a person speaks, hakos baruch will pay somebody back. A person should always run to do a mitzvah first. Why? Because one night that the, the older one came before the younger one, she had four generations that she actually went in front of Israel. Right, which means because these are the four generations, because Ruta Movia. From Ruta Mavia came Oved, and then Ishai, and then David, and then Shlomo. The Tzida was Rehovam, because basically Rehovam became the king from Amon. So therefore, from Moab, which is Ruta Mavia, you already had four generations of Jews, right? Because of the Moab, because she went one night first. Meaning since she went and she had the relations with her father one night first, because she thought she was doing a mitzvah. She thought there was no men around. She didn't just stand and come and see with the father. Right. right? So therefore, because of that, so since she did it earlier, she had four generations earlier. Even though Nama, she was slammed for not having okay, refined speech. You're right. So the refined speech, she was slammed, but she was not slammed for the fact that she went to do the, to run to do the mitzvah first. Tanu Rabbanam, we learned in a brayta. Shor shel Yisrael shereka shor shel kuti. What happens if you have a shor of Yisrael that comes and goes on a shor of a kuti? Patur is going to be patur. The Tam is going to pay Chatzinezek, and the Muad is going to pay Nezek Shalem. Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, Shor Shal Yisrael, Shenaga Shor Shal Kuti, Patur, a Shor Shal Yisrael that kills a Shor Shal Kuti is going to be Patur. The Shor Shal Kuti, Shenaga Shor Shal Yisrael, Ben Tam Ben Muad, Meshalem Nezek Shalem. It's going to pay Nezek Shalem. So says the Gimara. So everyone understood. So one more time. A shor shal Yisrael of a kuti is going to be patur, just like the goy. Right? But a kuti shal Yisrael is like a goy. So, 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 so that means, the basically means it's <laughs> much like a goy. So Rabbi Meir argues, and he says, no. The shor shal Yisrael kuti is patur, but kuti to Yisrael is always going to be nezek shalem. Not chetzi nezek, but nezek shalem. Meaning, right, that the according to the first shita of the Tanakama, the kuti when is like the Jew. Meaning, if it's a tam, it pays as chetzi. If it's a muad, pays nezek shalem. According to me, the kuti is one hundred percent, one hundred percent like uh, yes, one hundred percent non-Jew. So says the Gemara. Le meimra the savar of me kutim gerer yotim. Are you going to tell me that basically that according to Shtat Rabbi Meir, he held that the kutim are basically like goyim gemuri? I mean, basically, it's one hundred percent a goy, right? That's what we're coming. We're saying that they're one hundred percent a goy. So he says. Or meaning we have a contradiction. Any type of a ketan that comes from Rekem are going to be Tahor. Rabbi Yudah metamem nesheh gerim. Rabbi Yudah says it's going to be they're, they're Jewish. But they make they, they act like the Goyim. Right? Sorry, the Toim and they make mistakes. But if it comes from the Nochrim, it's going to be Tahor. Ben Yisrael melkotim Rabbi Yudah metamem chachamim tarim. Shalom nechachidu al kitmen. But they're not going to be suspected for their ketans. So he comes out to here. And he says over here, Rabbi Meir is going to be mitameh because the, the, the kutim are going to be suspected for their ketans. And the rabbi said that they're not going to be suspected for the ketans. So therefore, but if right now you're going to tell me that according to Rabbi Meir, they're goyim, what do I care then? A goy could have a ketan. It doesn't make them nida. It doesn't make them tameh. So Alma Kasavar Rabbi Meir, kutim gerem They are true uh, getting them. 
סאמר רבי יבוא, עושה זה ביבוא, הוא נו. את הקנס הוא שקנס רבי מין בממונם, שלא יתאמרו בהם. הוא אומר, אתה יודע מה קרה? באמת, הם באמת מתאמרו בהם. וזה למה הוא אמר לעשות את הקונספט של הטומאה, שבאמת יש טומאה. אבל פה יש איזה ספיישל דין של הקוטי, שהוא כמו גוי, שאנחנו עשינו קנס על הקוטי, כי לא רצינו שהם יהיו מתאמרים איתם. זאת אומרת, אנחנו עשינו קנס, שהם כמו גוי, שאנחנו עשינו קנס, 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 שאנחנו So the Gemara is going to ask, Mati, Rabbi Zira, Rabbi Zira asks, Ve'elu ne'arot she'esh lehem knas. There's going to be certain girls that they have a knas if they were violated. Ha'bala mamzeret, ba'la netina ve'lakutit. So if somebody violates a mamzeret, it doesn't matter that she's a mamzeret, at the end of the day, they have to pay a knas. The same with netina or akutit. Now if you're going to tell me now, knas of imim mamunam, that Rabbi Zira made a knas with their money, so so to here, she make a knas with the money, because she's a woman, so they don't get mixed up with them. So I'm Rabbi, Rabbi comes and he answers, כדי שלא יהיה חוטא נשכר, we don't want that the sinner should gain. What does that mean? We don't want that it should be like Hamas, that they're coming in, they're able to rape whoever they want and nothing ever happens to them. Why? Because Keilu, they're Jewish, so therefore they can do whatever they want. Right? Everybody's quiet. Nobody says anything all of a sudden. Right? Nobody, uh, nobody says anything. Why not? Yeah, exactly. You understand? They don't know what to say. Yeah. That just shows you the aflaya. Now you have your aflaya. That just shows you the difference. Show you about yeah. the Jew. Yeah, exactly. So he says over here, so that means he didn't want that the sinner should gain because he violated a kuti. So if you're here, he has to pay. Right? So says the Gemara, fine. The net vilaniim. Fine, make him pay. So now he doesn't, he doesn't gain, but give the money to aniim. Give the money to poor people. So Amar of Mari, Mishundavi Mamon, Sheshel Lot Tovim. He says, no, because it's money that nobody could come and be Tovea, I'd say. And therefore, since nobody could be tovea at zeh, meaning if you're just going to say, okay, fine, they have to pay, but then they have to give the money to Aniim, nobody's going to demand the money. So if nobody demands the money, no, you'll never pay. If you, have, if you owe money, but nobody will ever be able to come and to demand the money, so nobody will ever pay. It doesn't make sense to pay. Why in the world would somebody come and pay? It just doesn't make sense. Okay. We, we got until the Mishnah. Clear until